Okay, uh, Spurs fan 17 asks, who would you like to see cast in the Spider-Man reboot? Uh, who would I like to see cast in the Spider-Man reboot? Let me think. Um, I mean, maybe Joseph Gordon-Levitt because he was in 500 Days of Summer. The director has a good shot. Uh, he might be too old. Um, I like Jay Baruchel. I don't know if you know who Jay Baruchel is. He was in Tropic Thunder. Um, and he was in Knocked Up. He had the Canadian flag on his chest. Uh, Canadian uh, clover leaf, uh, clover leaf, maple leaf, um, which could be interesting. So those two, I think, uh, are not really up to scratch with the new kind of the actors, really, that could could play Spider Man. I imagine it'll be an unknown. To be fair, I imagine it'll be an unknown. Um, I don't know who could be Mary Jane. Um, so what bad guys are, could they go for? I don't know if they're using the same bad guys again or whether they're they're going for totally new ones. You see, I don't know what they're doing with that. But, um, yeah, I think maybe go, go Gordon Joseph Levitt or, um, or J. Baruchel as uh, Spider-Man slash Peter Parker. Um, do I think that 3D is a future of cinema or just a gimmick? Just a gimmick. Um, I honestly think it's just a gimmick. I think Avatar, uh, um, a lot of people say Avatar is good for 3D. I think Avatar is bad for 3D because it was good. It was good 3D. But because it was good, people now think that every movie in 3D is going to be good and they're always um, sadly disappointed um, I think 3D is, is, is a gimmick it is, it's going to go um, it doesn't at all help me get into the film um, Avatar probably the best because Avatar was the film where I didn't really notice it and if you don't notice it that's good but then again if you don't notice it what's the point of it you know so I think it, it for 3D to be, to be good really it has to get to the point where you don't notice it but then if you don't notice it What's the point for having it? You know, I don't need 3D to be engaged in a film. I need a good story, good acting, good characters. I don't need um, 3D. And I think it will wear its course like it did in the 80s. Um, hopefully soon as well. And I think there's also that thing about... Um, I don't think it, it works because I think there's there's a market for it in kids' films. But there, I don't think there's a need for it as much with, with adult films. Because I don't think adults are that as interested in in 3D. Once you get to a certain age, I think you're not that fussed, really. Um, what games do I think are ideally suited for film adaptations? Well, I've, I have, I gave this some thought, and I'm, I think, obviously World of Warcraft, I've never played it myself, but I know the gist of it. It's very Lord of the Ringsy, so that in itself would be, would be a good um, adaptation. Uh, I think Dead Space, was a space game, uh, would be great for a movie adaptation. Uh, Dead Space, um, I think that's about it really, um, Dead Space, yeah, Dead Space will be good, that's kind of like monsters in, in a spaceship, um, uh, Bioshock, but I think that's happening, isn't it, um, I think Bioshock, I like Bioshock, but I, I've got I have issues with it, but it would make a good game, because the narrative is solid, but I'd actually like to flip this question, and, um, uh, and now I've answered those, which are honestly the only two, the only ones I could think of, but actually, I think a good movie that would make a good game would be the Wreck series. Wreck is a, um, I believe it's Spanish uh, horror films. I've seen the first one. I watched, uh, uh, I watched the second one last night, and those two combined, the elements of those two combined because they're, they're quite different. They're a bit like Alien and Aliens. They kind of first one was claustrophobic, and the second one was kind of more action. Um, there's a good kind of religious subtext and context in those films that would make a really solid narrative. Um, it's got a very Bioshock feel to it, kind of a, a man trying to create a new kind of uh, civilization or, or or mess with something you shouldn't be messing with. It's all about kind of demonic possession and stuff like that. And, um, and the fact that it's in a real environment of a block of flats, you know, those kind of... Uh, that kind of setting, I think, would make a really good film. So, um, so yeah, I, um, so a really good game. So I would change the rec games into, in, sorry, the rec films into games. So I think that would be really good. First person shooter. What film would I like to see a sequel to? Anchorman Two. Um, Anchorman Two would be top of my list. Um, oh no, Anchorman Two tied with uh, South Park Two. I don't count the uh, Imagination Land. Uh, what else needs a sequel? Um, what else needs a sequel? Anchorman. Um, uh, 
I don't know really, I think that's about it. Um, I can't really think of any more that I'd want to see a sequel of. Uh, I don't, you have to have something that needs something that needs telling. And I think with South Park you have enough new characters to tell a story there. And uh, the same with um, Anchorman need, definitely needs a sequel. Um, it's just hilarious. I know they did a lot to straight to DVDs and all that, but I do believe that does need a Excuse me. Does need a sequel. Thank you for the questions. Okay. So we have XX Sean XX100. Have I ever walked out of a cinema before? And what's the most expensive DVD I ever bought? Um, no, I've never walked out of a film. I don't. I wouldn't feel right doing it. I don't think because. Or maybe I'd walk out. No, no. I'd walk out of a film possibly, but I would never ask for my money back. I never because that's not the cinema's fault. Is it? Let's face it. It's not the clerk who works at the cinema. It's not the assistant's fault that they have to deal with your attitude um, and all that. But walking out of a film and not asking for my money back, I probably would do. I was close to doing it for Invention of Lying um, and Eon Flux. Uh, right, and what's the most expensive DVD I ever bought? Well, the most expensive DVD I ever bought was um, was a big set of a re the WrestleMania set, WrestleMania 1 to um, 20. Which, uh, 21, sorry, which I don't know, was about £120 or something. But the most the most expensive single DVD I ever bought, because really it's my own first count box sets, so I'm just grabbing the DVD, is Rushmore. Now, I've, I've mentioned this before, and I said I didn't want to say how much I paid for it. The Criterion edition of Rushmore. Now, I've since learned how to uh, look for deals, but because this was American and wasn't available anywhere else, um... I thought I'd take the extra shot at it, and it was uh, £28 I spent for this, £28 for one DVD of Rushmore. Um, I'm glad I got it, I wish I got it cheaper, but £28 is the most I've ever spent on one DVD, about £120 for a, for a set, uh, which again is ridiculous. Um, if I was to direct a film, who would be in it and who would write it? Um, I guess Wes Anderson would write it, Wes Anderson, Noah Brombach. Charlie Kaufman, people like that. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson, but I don't know if he does he write his films. Yes, he, yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson uh, would write it. Who would be in it? Uh, Peter Sarsgaard, I like. If it was a kind of, it would probably be a quirky kind of family drama or a quirky, uh, unusual kind of film about a loner or something. Those kind of films I gravitate towards in general. Peter Sarsgaard, I'd like to see. Um, I would love to to work with um, if I was to direct a film. Gordon Joseph Levitt, Joseph Gordon Levitt, is it? I always get his name mixed up. Uh, him, the guy from Five Hundred Days of Summer. Um, who else? Uh, Owen Wilson, I like when he's in my Sanderson films. Um, uh, Bill Murray, people like that. Those kind of people. Actresses would be Natalie Portman, Zoe Deschanel. People like that. They're kind of the fringes of alternative. Um, what films were I looking forward to in twenty ten? As I said, there's not many. Mainly, as I said, Inception, Toy Story 3, and um, the the social network. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome, and I hope you get more subs. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, Will asked me, who's a friend of mine, he asked me if I could do a review on a TV series. I'll do that in a separate video. Um, okay. I don't know what this guy's this name is. It's what the F... Is, is it, or bullshit or something? I don't know. Um, I apologise. I don't know your name. Um, what's your top five favourite movies of all time, or top ten if you have it? As I said to him, I have a top hundred, but I won't do that. Um, my top ten is. Hold up, I'll just get my other site up. I have it written down. I actually did a video on this the other day, but it, it didn't transfer right, so I just got fed up and didn't bother. Um, Top 10 movies all, top 100 movies of all time, just loading the list up. Okay, right. At number 10 is 500 Days of Summer. At number 9 is Aliens. Uh, 8 is Bottle Rocket. Uh, Austin Powers, at number 7. 6 is Batman Returns. Um, 5 is Rushmore. Uh, 4 is The Royal Tenenbaums. 3 is Shattered Glass. Two is Die Hard, and one is Wayne's World. So there's my top ten. 
Um, okay.